Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we are continuing our top 50 with video number three of five. We're going to be discussing our top 21 to 30, right? Yes, that's exactly it. So <laughs> Monique and I have already done two of these videos before where we went through, uh, th what is it? I can't the numbers are so hard. It's <laughs> 31 to 50. 50. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so we've done those. If you wanted to check out those videos, we will leave links up here where you can check out all the other videos that we did before. I'm and if you this. are just tuning in now, we are pairing a giveaway with each of these videos. Today's giveaway is quite exciting, so make sure you stay tuned till the end. For those who have entered in the past, all the giveaway winners have already been chosen, but we haven't had much uh, success in contacting them. Yes. I think our emails might be going into your spam folders. So just, uh, just a heads up, make sure you're checking your spam. Um, if we don't hear back from some of those winners, we may have to redraw. So just keep that in mind. And before we get into our list, I do want to mention that uh, we are trying to take more photos of the games that we're featuring, um, but it is really difficult. It's extremely time consuming because you got to lay out all of them and set it up as if you're about to play and yeah. then take photos. And then break so, it down and then put out another game yeah, and do so the same we, thing. If we had to do that for every single game in this entire series, we literally wouldn't be able to do this. Yes, and we so, also don't feel comfortable taking other people's photos off the internet and yeah, using them for ours. You can't do that. Can't that's, do that that's, yeah. that's stealing. So mm -hmm. we're we, we are trying to do more of them. But just uh, just know that we're doing our best. <laughs> All right, so now on to number 30. Uh, should I go first? Sure, yeah. Me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so my number 30th game of all time is actually a, uh, a crossover. It's a game that Naveen has already mentioned. And as we get closer and closer to our top 10, you know, these crossovers are going to happen more yeah. often because we do share a collection. Yeah. And so this is a game that was designed by Andreas Pelican as well as Alexander Pfister in 2015 and published by Lookout Games. And it is called Isle of Sky from... Chieftain to King. Yes. So we already spoke about this. Um, if you hadn't seen that video, spoiler alert, sorry. But uh, yes, this is a game that I really enjoy. We both kind of discovered it. Well, you know what? I think I've discovered this you first. You taught it to me first. Yeah, yeah. And I was uh -huh. like, check out this awesome auction game that features Highland. Yes. Just a really, really fun package. Uh, we have covered this game on our channel, but it was a two-player version. I still, of, uh, as of this moment, I'm still not completely on board with the two-player version yeah. of this game. This might just but... have to say three to five players. Yeah. yeah. For me, the higher the player count, the better, totally, I yeah. think. Uh, it just makes the auction sweeter. And uh, it is standing the test of time for us. It is, yeah. I thought this was actually going to be higher on my list compared to yours. I thought I thought it would be lower on your list. Yeah, why did you, you do that? I guess you like it more than I do. <laughs> Just a I little do. bit, yeah. It's a really fun game. And so uh, I won't talk about it too much because we've already spoken about this before. That is my number 30, Isle of Sky. Okay, my number 30, this is a game that came out in 2007, designed by Steve Finn and published by Steve Finn, or Dr. Finn's Games, as well as Aiello, and it is Biblios. Ah. Now, Biblios is a very interesting theme. <laughs> it, well loved. It is, uh, you are different monasteries trying to build up your own personal libraries. There are five different types of books that you're trying to acquire, mm -hmm. so you can score the most amount of points in the game. It's a loose theme. Very loose. Yeah, it's essentially a card game. You know, you have a deck of cards, and they are, are colored different suits for those different types of books, mm -hmm. I guess. Yep. And uh, each suit has a specific value. And so whoever at the end of the game has the highest sum in each of those suits left in their hand will score the value of whatever the dice is mm -hmm. for that, that suit. Yep. Those die values can increase or decrease throughout the game. The game is like played over two halves where the first half of the game, you're kind of divvying out cards and putting, setting up an auction deck. Setting up an auction deck. Yep. And then the whole second half, players are, are participating in that auction to right. try to gain uh, specific cards. Yeah. And Some cards uh, have uh, the ability to manipulate the score of mm -hmm. different uh, of these different manuscript types. Uh, some cards are just straight up coins, mm -hmm. which you can use in the auctions. And then, of course, uh, there is kind of a card counting element where yeah. there are certain uh, sets of cards for these different five different types of books. And mm -hmm. so a lot of the second half of the game gets very interesting because you can kind of card count, but you can't at the same time. Mm -hmm. because, it's interesting. Uh, there is a little bit of bluffing going on in the game because you're going to be manipulating the dice, mm -hmm. trying to score the most amount of points. And sometimes there's something very satisfying of knowing that you have a <laughs> hand or a suit kind of locked in based off of the math. Yeah. But you see somebody else still trying to inch their way for it and they're going to ah, spend their money. You're so mean. Yeah, trying to get, <laughs> trying to get the, the suit that you know. You're like, I got this. This so is rude. mine. And they're wasting all their money. They should be going somewhere else. So. And Naveen's like, sucker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I, I really enjoy this game. I think it's fantastic. Uh, two player game, not not so much, but three and four players. Yeah. Really, really good. You definitely want to play it at higher player counts. Yeah, four, four players is my favorite, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and it's a game that your parents love. My parents do like this yeah. one. Yeah, my dad, he uh, once, once he played it the first time and uh, he got the taste of being close to winning he, he, he definitely <laughs> like, wants to play, play it again he wants to play it again right away yeah. so that's that's a sign of a good game for yeah. him
Well, that's my number 30. That is Biblios. Good choice. All right, moving on to our number 29. My number 29 is, I think, our first party game mm, on our list. Mm -hmm. I don't remember now if we've mentioned one. But on this, your list. Uh, on my list, yeah. yes. This definitely is. Uh, and it's a game that was designed by Thomas. I'm so sorry. I'm going to mispronounce this. But it's Thomas Dejeuner L'Esperance, I think. Uh, and published by the Scorpion Masque in 2018, and it's a game called Decrypto. Mm -hmm. So we've spoken about this game once before, I think on a, a Let's Talk Board Games mm, maybe, uh, episode, so. yep. but if you've never played this game before, it is fantastic. It's basically where you're split up into two teams, and uh, each team has a series of four words that are on their, their tableau, yep. their secret from the opposite and team. And those four words will be yours for the entire duration of the game. Yes. And so uh, you're essentially trying to, trying to figure out what four words you, the opposite team has. By uh, each round, one person is going to be uh, given a card that has a numbered code. And that person is going to try to give their team clues so they can figure out what their code is on their card. Yeah, because essentially the, the sleeve that you have in front of you, there's going to be slots one, two, three, and four. And mm -hmm. those words are going to go into those slots and right. stay there forever. Yeah. Uh, and so at the start of a player's turn, they get that card and it's going to be three of those four numbers mm -hmm. in kind of so many mix match. And so as the clue giver, you're trying to give your teammates clues that are mm -hmm. going to lead them to guess a specific three-digit code based yes. off of the four words that are out in front of them. Right. And so the, the thing is, if the opposite team is able to guess your code, then they'll get kind of a point. Yeah. There's kind of this point system yes. that we always get get confused about. <laughs> but uh, you're essentially yeah. trying to guess your opponent's uh, code twice. Yes. You can you... either guess their code twice to yeah. win, or if your opponents are trying to be too cryptic to their own teammates mm -hmm. and they have a miscommunication and they misguess their personal code twice, then yes, they, and lose. they lose. Yeah. And so over the course of the game, you know, you're going to do this several times. And so your opponents are going to write down all of the clues that were given and mm -hmm. what numbers they were. And so they'll find similarities in yeah. these words. And so eventually they may be able to figure out what the four words are. Yeah. But every time we played, it's been really intense because, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just our friends, but they get really into it. It gets really competitive. And every time I have to be the clue giver, I get so nervous because I don't yeah. want to let my team down. It's because the first set of clues, if you're the first person to give out clues, yeah. it, it can be fairly vague. Uh, after about three rounds in, because these words have not moved or changed, they're right. always going to be the same the slot. Same so if it's like plum, grape, yeah. crayon, <laughs> then you're thinking, okay, maybe purple is the is the word. So or, you don't want to be too obvious. Yeah, like yeah. That. You yeah. don't want to be too obvious, but you also don't want to be too cryptic. Like yes. you want them to be able to figure out which you know which ones they are. I don't know. It's yeah. a very good game. It's a good game. It's, yeah. it's really intense. Highly recommend this uh, if you have a big enough group. Mm -hmm. And that is my number 29, Decrypto. Okay, my number 29. This one is actually pretty surprising that it's here on the list. I thought it would be somewhere closer down on the list, meaning closer towards the one mm. uh, from where it it's is. Like higher. Higher on the list. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, this game came out in 2015. It is designed by both Rob Davio and Matt Leacock and published by Z-Man Games. And it is Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Specifically? And, and I say Season 1 specifically because it's the only one of the three Legacy games that I have completed from start <laughs> to finish. So shameful. Yes. We've so. been talking about finishing Season 2 since the beginning of the year. And we, we really want to. Uh, I think we've been talking <laughs> about it for over a year. And um, there was a point where we just took a break on Season 2, and now we've taken such a long break that Ugh. every single month it's harder to get back into. But we will do it eventually. We know we want to. Yeah, it's so hard, yeah. right? Because, yeah. you know, as reviewers, you have to play so many games. So exactly. We're yeah. going to get back to it. So this game is the Pandemic System. So if you're familiar with that game, there are basically a bunch of different types of diseases out there that you are uh, going to be asymmetric, uh, cooperative um, teammates, and you are going to try to find cures for these diseases as well as um, eradicate them if you can. But in the legacy game, there is a story narrative where every single game that you play is one specific month in this one long year kind of campaign that's mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. Uh, it is very interesting. I do not want to spoil anything, but things can change. The mm -hmm. game changes uh, and there's a lot of twists in different turns. So without spoiling anything, uh, I kind of want to just leave it at that. But this is my number 29 game of all time, well, Pandemic Legacy. I'm also really surprised that this mm -hmm. isn't higher on your list. We had a fantastic time playing through yeah. Season 1. Uh, we are not one of those people who are able to just obliterate the game with a perfect score. No. I think we've had a, a few fallen cities. I can yes. say we've had some fallen cities. It's not necessarily like a spoiler. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm really surprised it's not higher. Maybe it's because you haven't played it in a long time. There could be a recency bi bias. Yeah, exactly. It, I think right? we played it like in 2015, 2016. We played it when it first when came, came out. Came out. Yeah. So it's been about five years since we played it. 
I do remember really enjoying it. We played it just the two of us. And whenever we play Pandemic uh, Legacy, we add a third player that we both kind of control because mm -hmm. it's all open communication. Yeah. So and it's not asymmetric, kinda... by the way. It's, uh, everybody has its own like asymmetric power, power but yeah. it's not it's yeah. not an asymmetric game. Sure. It's fully cooperative for anybody right. who's never played Pandemic. But yeah. the, the Pandemic system on its own is already really good mm -hmm. um, for people out there who like cooperative games and the Legacy just like really... Out of, up, yeah. out of this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and I really like cooperative games, and so that is my number 29 of all time, Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Okay, moving on to our number 28. So this is interesting because this, this is our first exact crossover. Yes, they both line and, up on 28 each yeah, for both of us. Yeah, and we actually have like a few of the, two or three of these uh -huh. throughout the entire list where this actually happened. Yes. Um, and so this is a card game that we've talked about so many times in our videos in the past. It was designed by Naoki Homa and published by Z-Man Games in 2007, and it is called Parade. Yes. So this, we've talked about this so many times if you've seen some of our videos in the past, but this is one of our favorite card games of all time. Um, we bring this with us essentially anytime we go to a convention, anytime we go anywhere yeah. where we feel like we're going to be able to play something, we'll it, bring this game. It's great. It plays up to six players. I yeah. think the, the sweet spot is probably four or five. But if you like sometimes it. when you go to a convention, there are like six people together and it's like, well, do we break up into two games of three or should we just play this quick 20, 25 minute game yeah. at six? Uh, essentially what's going on in this game, it is Alice in Wonderland themed. Uh, it is a card game, essentially. Yeah. Uh, and it's a thinky card game. Yeah, what's happening is there is a parade going on, and uh, <laughs> essentially what you're going to be doing is playing cards to the parade, to the back end, and then assessing uh, how many people are going to get kicked out of the parade and go into your scoring pile. Now, scoring typically sounds good, but in this particular game, the lowest score wins. Mm -hmm, and yeah. so ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to manipulate the parade or the row of cards so that you do not have to ever accept or take cards into your possession and you're going to kind of put people in bad positions. But if you do take cards, you want to have the lowest uh, total sum of that specific color at the end of the game because whoever has the lowest sum gets to flip over the cards. Or the lowest number of cards, I believe. It, it, no, it's actually the other way around. You want to have the most amount of a specific suit. Oh, the most amount. Yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm mistaken. So it gets to a point yeah. where, like, let's say I have three blue cards yeah. that are of, of high value each, and you also have three blue cards, then you can kind of card count, and you're basically like, I need to acquire another blue card, because if yeah. not, I'm going to score the most amount of points right. versus flipping my cards over, and you just and get one And each card point. is worth one point. And yeah. it's interesting, because you, you kind of have this uh, flip at some point, like... You really don't want to take cards, but as soon as you do, you want to have the most number yeah, you're of that color. Yeah, you're gunning for at that point, yeah. And so you, you kind of go into this fun, like, bidding war against other people who have the same color yeah. cards as you. It is very clever, uh, very thinky, and uh, we've always had a really good time mm -hmm. playing this with, with other people and introducing it to new players. Yeah, so. it was so much so, it was out of print uh, just a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and so we, we found a copy. Or, no, your mom gifted us a copy during yeah. Christmas. <laughs> And uh, right. so that was really nice. And then we were like, we love this game so much that we bought a second copy once it went right back in print. Yeah, so, we panicked. Yeah, we panic bought, so. yeah, but we love it. And so that is our joint number 28 parade. Okay, so I guess it's going to go back to me sure, <laughs> for yeah. my number 27, which is also another crossover from one of uh, Naveen's games in a previous video. It is another card game. Uh, it's probably higher on my list than Parade because it's a little bit thinkier. Mm -hmm. And it was designed by Dan Kassar, published by Renegade Games in 2015. You probably already know the game. It is Arboretum, the meanest tree <laughs> game out there. Meanest tree game, huh? <laughs> card or yeah. no card, right? Um, but we do have an update. You know, for so long, and if you're not familiar with this game, this is a game about building an arboretum in and trying to score the most amount of points by earning the right to score them at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. That is the, the quick and dirty version of how to play this. But uh, for the longest time, we've been talking about the original edition of the game before the reprint and how we've been looking for it for so long, essentially the green box mm -hmm. edition, and we haven't been able to find it. Well, just recently, um, the tides have turned, mm -hmm. I suppose, and we were, we were so generously gifted a copy of the original green box yes. arboretum. <laughs> And this is it in all its glory. We opened it and it was beautiful with all the original uh, artwork. And so this is gifted to us by uh, our friend Alex over at Board Game Co. So thank you so much for that. Yeah. Um, when it came in, Naveen was so just <laughs> yeah, like... He tore his... the package open and I was like... Oh! Yeah. <laughs> we I, didn't know it was coming in. He just he just generously uh, sent it over to us. Yeah, I, I, I guess he knew that, that we, uh, we missed the fact that we had this. Yeah. Um, Alex, by the way, uh, is also doing his countdown yes. of his top 100. He's somewhere in the middle of it by mm -hmm. the time this, this one uh, is released. So if you're not familiar with it, we will leave 
a link to his channel down below so mm -hmm. you can check out. Uh, he's counting down from 100 down to one. So that's a big task. Don't know how you're exactly. doing that, Alex. Yeah, he's but, doing but it. But seriously, when this came in, Naveen's yeah. heart grew like three sizes yeah. <laughs> in one day. So yes. thank you. Thank you very much. So yeah. for anybody who's never seen it before, this is the original uh, version of Arboretum. Also my number 27, Arboretum. Okay, moving on. My number 27 of all time. This is a game that we have, another game that we have two copies of. Uh, and this one <laughs> came out. I know, what's wrong with us? Uh, this oh one gosh. came out in uh, 2014. Uh, this one, copy that I'm about to show was from Stronghold Games. Eagle Griffin Games also have a more souped up, deluxified EV version. Mm. And it is designed by Vital Serta himself. This is Kanban, the Automotive Revolution. I cannot believe it is. In the 20s on your list. What? I cannot believe That's it. A good, there's a lot of games out there, and this one is uh, 27. It's oh, my number. gosh. And to be fair, it's not that I, I don't believe that it can be on somebody's list this low. It's just I know that you like it so much. I do, but I like... It's shocking. Apparently, I like 26 other games uh, just in front of this one. But I guess. It is a fantastic <laughs> game. Essentially, what you're going to be doing... We, we've actually covered this twice on our channel. We have. Once we made a mistake this... the first time. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's the... <laughs> so. Once we covered with this version, and then uh, a second time we covered with the new Kanban EV, mm -hmm. essentially it's the same game, just some, some different spatial layout, right. uh, new graphic design. And uh, this this uh, particular version, um, it's a little homely for me. Uh, I kind of like uh, the, the layout of this one a little bit better, but um, it's essentially the same game. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be running a car factory where you're going to be trying to get different blueprints for cars, uh, acquire different car parts, um, do some R&D on these different cars, and actually test them out on the racetrack. And so um, it is a very, very thinky, crunchy, heavy Euro game. Oh, yeah. Uh, heavy. And this one takes a lot of forward planning, and it is a very, very interesting game that is my number 27 of all time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, tell me. So, so shocked. Tell me. This is our first heavy game that we've ever learned. And this yes. is the original version of the mm -hmm. game that we cannot, uh, we can't get ourselves to get rid of this specific version of Kanban. Yeah. Uh, we've spoken about it in a previous video that this is probably going to stay in our collection because the Kanban EV, as beautiful as it is, and it also comes with an expansion. Mm -hmm. So there, it, there's a, some differences. Uh, it's just huge. So yeah. if we were to bring this to a convention or just somewhere we are, where we have to travel, this is the game that we bring. Yeah. And I remember when we first got it, I just got it on a whim. Like I just bought it and I was like, you know what? It's a game about making cars. I'm going to learn this. Somebody and, had said that like, if you want to try a heavier game, yeah. try Kanban. I, I didn't know what heavier meant right. at the time because we were literally just getting into the hobby. And I remember taking that rule book and trying to read it in the car. And I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. this is not a regular game. Yeah, yeah. So lots of uh, nostalgia. And uh, for some reason, Naveen is so good at this game. <laughs> I, well, His win streak is much higher than mine. Yeah. So without spoiling anything in the in the previous videos, so yes, uh, without yeah. without yeah. spoiling anything. So <laughs> anyway, uh, you're definitely gonna see this in in the future in one of the, our future uh, top ranking videos. But for now, I guess that's number twenty seven, Kanban. All right, so our number 26 is our second exact crossover. And so, uh, yeah, I, we couldn't believe it. We yeah. couldn't believe it either. <laughs> this is a game that was designed by uh, Juma Al Juju and published by Karma Games in 2017. And it is Clans of Caledonia. Yes. So this game is really good. <laughs> the, most, the most game in such a small box. Yeah. Wow, like... Such a small box. Such a small box for this, but wow, there is a lot of game packed into this one. Yeah, and I almost can't. I feel like it's going to come apart if I don't. Yeah, I think to hold I'll hold it. it how about but that? yeah, if you're if you're not familiar with this game, uh, and if you've played Terra Mystica, it is the game that we felt like was the most Terra Mystica esque game at the time, while still being a lot lighter. Sure. Right? Yeah. Or I don't even know if that's true. Yeah, a lot of people compare right, this to but Terra Mystica, but uh, I don't. I don't really it has see some it, yeah. Terra Mystica things going on for it. And if you're not familiar with Terra Mystica, then just completely ignore everything yeah. I said. But essentially, we are different clans, and uh, we are just trying to build up our area on this uh, this multi hex board. Mm -hmm. And we're building out different types of buildings. You have miners and um, people who are working in the forest, as well as bakeries and just different types of buildings that will produce you different types of resources. And those resources you can use to fulfill contracts. You can sell them at the market. And the game is played over five rounds. And each round is going to have a different uh, scoring criteria that is randomized at the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. But you can see what all the scoring criteria are going to be yeah. for the whole game. 
And so it's just a, a very fun, thinky Euro. I don't know, when I, when I played it for the first time, I thought, it, you know, it's very different. Yeah. But also very similar in some of the ways that you take your actions. And so the reason why people draw similarities to Terra Mystica is because it has that uh, that mm. aspect of it where you have the neighboring the bonuses. The neighboring bonuses, yeah, that's yeah, exactly it, it. Yeah, it has something going on like that. It also has a similar kind of scoring, I, th I think, if I'm remembering this correctly, for whoever has like the longest, it's like if you're your longest uh, contiguous yeah, area. like landmass. Yeah, so it has those kinds of similarities, um, but I think that's about it. Right? Yeah, the, my my favorite thing about this game is uh, the way you have to manage your money. Uh, every single time you build out on one of the hexes, uh, not only do you have to pay the standard building costs, but mm -hmm. there's also a value on that hex that you're building onto. So if you want to maintain and keep growing your kind of uh, your little farm or whatever mm -hmm. it is that you're trying to do, it's going to cost you. So sometimes you have to go to the market, which gets really interesting because it's, it's very uh, stock markety. where if you buy a lot, then mm -hmm. the price goes up. If you sell a lot, then the price goes down. Yeah. And so you can kind of manipulate the market uh, and buy different goods, things that maybe you're not able to produce, you can go out and buy. There's these different uh, scoring parameters for however much you fulfilled in certain contracts. There's three different parameters. There's like sugar cane and- uh... there's, It's like premium goods. Yes. So whenever you fulfill contracts, that what they give you is these premium goods. Yes. And so the amount of points that you get for those goods is gonna be dependent on how many people fulfill these contracts yes. because it has its own kind of economy. Yes. It's kind of complicated to explain, mm -hmm. but I agree. The economy in this game is probably one of the most interesting parts of it. Yeah. You know, you start the first half of the game trying to figure out how to get a money engine going because a lot of these buildings are super expensive. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the clans are asymmetric, yep. and so you can play the asymmetry of those clans to to your advantage As to you try should. to yeah. create that economy for yourself. Yeah. Because towards the end of the game, you're just like really building yeah. up, building up your. Yeah, I think you know. the game comes with like <laughs> eight different clans, and I still haven't played with all eight of them. But every single time I try to play with somebody new, so I can kind of experience something yeah. different. So there's a lot of replayability in this game, and we really, really enjoy it. Yeah. Anyway, that is our number twenty six, our exact, exact crossover, yes. clans of Caledonia. Okay, moving on to our number 25. We are halfway through. This is a little bit of a shorter video because yeah. we have a lot of uh, crossovers Crossover, going yeah. on. But uh, this is a game that was new to me this year. And so, you know, I just want to take a minute to say that's why these, these top 50 lists are interesting because they're going to be constantly changing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we had held off on, on doing a top 50 series for a long time because we have a lot of FOMO of like, well, what about these games that we haven't played yet? Yeah, I feel yeah. like they would be on my list. If I had played them. Eventually, like, we would like to play them all, but yeah. obviously at some point you just say, you know what, it's time to make a list. So. Right. So I, I'm, I'm sure eventually we'll probably return to these lists, but this one in particular, this game is one that was new to me that I'm I'm happy was able to make it to, to my list. And it is actually a spoiler for those of you who are going to be following along on our Uwe Rosenberg series, because this is a game that was designed by him, uh, published by Lookout Games in 2016. And it is the meanest farming game around. <laughs> it's called Agricola. I think, I don't know which version we have. And come to think of it, I don't think this game was designed in 2016. No, <laughs> that no. was way too recent. Yeah. The original, I think, is somewhere like in 2009, maybe? Seven, maybe? Yeah. But uh, the the more updated version, mm -hmm. which I think might not be the one that we have, was I guess released in 2016. Yeah. So that's what's on BGG for the that's, year. Yeah, I think but, yeah, you took it down wrong. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. So just know that this this is definitely an older <laughs> game. This is one of the classic farming games. Uh, this might have been like the first farming game might or be. something that yeah. was ever uh, designed that made made it to like the mainstream board mm -hmm. gaming media. And uh, before we covered this game, actually, I had played Caverna, which is the other farming game that was kind of like a sequel to this. Mm -hmm. it, it took this tight uh, version of a farming game and made it a lot more sandboxy. You could do a lot more in that one. And so I actually went from playing Caverna to now learning Agricola for the series that mm -hmm. we're doing. Yep. And it was a difficult experience yeah. because you're going from doing, you're going from a place of abundance to a place of scarcity. Scarcity, yeah. yeah. Of... And it's scarcity in so many different ways. And it's just such a tight design. I thought I would hate it. And the first time we played it, I kind of did mm -hmm. because I, it, it was just so uncomfortable. Because it was so uncomfortable to most play. Most Euro games, you're so used to specializing. Like, I'm going to go the whiskey route, you know, right. something like that. In this game, it's like, no, no, you're if you don't do everything, you're going to get punished a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But I'm just spoiled. I'm just yeah. spoiled by the newer design of Euros <laughs> yeah. of like, I'm going to build up this engine by doing all these things. I'm going to be able to do all of it. But this one, you can't because you only have a certain number of rounds, which it's actually a lot of rounds, but each 
realm, only one person can go to one space. The worker placement aspect of it can yeah, get really, like, really tight. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. And then, like you were saying, the way uh, that scoring works is you get you get points depending on how many of these categories yeah. you are able to fulfill. So you need to have like one of each type of animal. Yeah. You need to do you need to do everything. And some things that you're going to score, like you, you find yourself on the bottom end of a margin. Mm -hmm. So you're like, how much time do I want to invest in getting two more? vegetables just for that one extra point maybe i should go do something else you know yeah but then that something else is blocked by player two or player player three and right. you're, you know you're going forth or something like that it's so, a fantastic yeah, game it's a really really uh, good one. really really good game this is a game that i've seen uh people play tournaments in like every single time i go to a convention uh there are a, a large deck of cards that will increase your replayability you know, totally. every time you play it again it's you're a doing a different strategy mm -hmm. and it's just one that i've enjoyed more and more every single time i played it i had to include it on the list my number 25 agricola okay the true halfway point of our entire list this is my number 25 this one came out back in 2017 and we were first introduced to it or exposed to it when we went to essen back in 2017 this is a true dry euro my mm -hmm. kind of game yeah. uh, and it is published by stronghold games and designed by fabio lopiano and it is a game that's for three to five players only called Kalima. So because it's three to five players, we don't get to play it as often as I'd right. like to. Yeah. Uh, but this is a true dry Euro where you are going to be doing a bunch of stuff in the Mediterranean. <laughs> and I uh, mean, check out this box. I know. This just it. screams Naveen, right? It does. It's that <laughs> the beige, brown. Orange, but also, it's very small and thin. So interesting. It takes up very little space on the on the shelf, which is great. Yeah. Uh, this is a fantastic game. I was able to introduce it uh, actually to recently. some friends recently. Yeah, yeah, and I played it again, and I was like, "Wow, that this is a good game. We mm -hmm. should we should play this more often." Yep. But like you're saying, it's minimum three players, and really, the the more players, the better. Yeah. Um. And so at that first time when we went to Essen Spiel, the year that it was released, I had heard that uh, that it was kind of like a dry Euro, and that's like really down. Uh, My wheelhouse. Means wheelhouse. Yeah, totally. So we, we demoed it, and it was pretty much love at first sight for you, mm -hmm. right? Yep, it was. Yeah, there's a very interesting uh, way that actions are taken in this game. Uh, you can score for a bunch of different parameters, mm -hmm. and so uh, it's a little bit difficult to explain without it kind of laid mm -hmm. out. But um, Essentially, there's yeah. a big board, yeah. right? And uh, I, I forgot how many rounds there are, but each round you're going to score for a different thing. And it's it's uh, for the most part, it's like area majority. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you're going to score for different churches or for... Uh, having the most of contributing art to yeah, different contributing uh, art. cathedrals yeah and so <laughs> you want to make sure that you have the most of whatever that thing is whenever it's time to score yes. but the thing that's really interesting is the way that you select your actions there's a grid kind of like the bottom left hand mm -hmm. corner of the board that details all the different action types and so players have these discs and you're going to place a disc in between two action types and yeah, you get to take crossroads. you get to take both actions that are on the opposite side of your disc mm -hmm. in whatever order you choose but the thing is, in the future, if somebody wants to take that exact same pair of actions, they're going to place their disc on top of yours. Mm -hmm. And so they'll take their two actions and everybody else who has a disc under theirs gets to take those two actions again. Yeah. So sometimes so, you want to set yourself up for an action that you know other people are going to want to take mm -hmm. so that you can be that first one in there. Somebody else comes in, you get to take the action. A right. third person comes in, you get to take the action. And that third person can be you. Yes. So it right, can yeah. be like my token, I'll take my actions, and the Bean's token, he gets to take his, and then back to me. So I get to take two actions really mm -hmm. in one go yeah so yeah. setting yourself up it's, is really really nice it's a game. different it's a different experience but it's, it's really interesting and there's a little bit of luck involved but which we don't typically enjoy yep. in euro games but it's done well the it game has really well. done yep. well yeah and it plays in 75 minutes and that's about that's about right so it's, yeah, it it's that nice it's welcome. yeah it's that nice uh, timeline on on this game and that is my number 25 overall that is kalimala all right my number 24 is a game that we do not own <laughs> i've been wanting this game for not years. many people own this one yeah because it went out of print and uh it didn't go into print so you have to kind of print it yourself if yeah. you want it and this is a game that was designed by ed carter and carl Ch chadiak i think it's been published by cambridge uh, games factory originally in 2005 and it's a card game called glory to rome so this is a this is a card game that had influenced a few other card games that came out after it mm -hmm. that i really really enjoyed the first of its kind that I'd played was a game called Motainai. Motainai yeah. And uh, if you're not familiar with this genre of card games, it's it's kind of like a game that has this follow mechanism. You know, you choose an action and then everybody who's going to take the same action gets to go after you, mm -hmm. essentially. Multi-purpose cards. Multi-purpose cards, yeah. that kind of thing. Think Fort. Fort has similar mechanisms, and that's also a big reason as to why I enjoy Fort. Yeah. And it's also a game that's really hard to explain. <laughs> you're basically building up buildings in Rome. In Rome, yeah. Yeah. And the cards are multi-use. So you're going to have cards that will be used for building materials. Um, some will be used as buildings themselves. 
Once you build a building, it's going to give you a power that you can now utilize for the rest of the game. And some of the powers are ridiculous. Like they're just like really strong or affect other players. And so there's a lot of chaos that's involved, yeah. but it's so fun. And you can play with, with a lot of people. Yeah. And the more players, I think, the better. Yeah, um, I've only played this one time, and I really, really enjoyed it. I played a three-player game, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when it was first explained to me, I was kind of like, what? Like, it takes ah, a game for you to you get it. About? Yeah, But right? halfway through, like, you see these different combinations and, like, these kind of weird overpowered things, and everybody has kind of the same overpowered stuff going on, mm -hmm. where you're like, how could that even be part of, like, you can do that, <laughs> like, or I can do this? So yeah. uh, it kind of all balances out over, over the course of a game. And, it, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I haven't played it enough to speak on it. Um, it's so, really yeah. good. Um, it's really silly, and it's just a good time. It's just a fun experience with a, with a big group. Um, but but like I said, this game has been out of print for a while, and I don't think they have plans of reprinting it. I believe there. I don't exactly know how it works, but there it, there are print and play files available that I think you can access. Like it's mm -hmm. like legal. It's okay, yeah. and you can print them yourselves. I just haven't gotten around to doing to, that for us. It, yeah. But it's been something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time because it is a fantastic fantastic game and it is my number 24 glory to rome all right so we're moving pretty well uh my number 24 of all time is a game that involves a lot of dice rolling uh you're constantly rolling dice in this game it That's came right. out in 2018 published by aeg and designed by john declare and it is space base yeah uh, what a great game uh, <laughs> this one is really really fun Essentially what you have is uh, you have a, a set of cards in front of you that are going to be valued anywhere from 1 to 12. And on a player's turn, you're going to roll uh, two dice. And what you can do with those dice is either you can take the sum of the, of the dice that you rolled and get whatever benefit is in front of you, or you can split them up. Let's say I rolled a 1 and a 5. I can take either 6 or I could take the, the benefits of a one and a five. Over the course of the game, you're gonna try to get more cards and replace these other cards, these starting cards, so that you can get better and sweeter benefits. Because essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to race to, I think, 40 points. Yeah, but the thing about it is it's Catan-like in the yeah. sense that it might be my turn, I'll roll the dice, but everybody gains the benefits on their cards uh, if they have upgraded, that upgraded card. their cards. Yes. So there's a lot of the uh, player interaction. Yes. You know, it's, it's really exciting because people are, are are kind of like, don't roll an 11 or yeah. else this guy is going to win or, you yeah. know, something like At that. At the beginning, you're kind of rooting for yourself. And then as you start upgrading cards, you start rooting for other people to roll a certain thing so that you can get the passive mm -hmm. benefit for the cards that you've upgraded. Right, yeah. And you yeah. really enjoy, like, Nibby really enjoys games that uh, require you to roll dice. He likes to gamble. <laughs> yeah. But not in, not in like a serious sense. He likes games that I like, have I like crap that. style gambling yeah. where it's like, okay, like the pyramid of like sixes, sevens, and eights are yeah. the most common to roll. But whenever you get into these games, somehow the person is rolling their tens and elevens, yeah. you know? Right. Yeah. So that part is really exciting. Mm -hmm. And the economy in this game is also really interesting yeah. because you are trying to, uh, you, you know, you need to earn money in order to buy these additional upgrades or buy cards that, that'll make your tableau better. Yeah. But uh, as soon as you buy a card, all your money gets spent. There's no change. There's you no don't change. need to hold on to money from round to round. Uh, if you spend it. If you spend it. Yeah, I do agree. This is a really good game, mm -hmm. especially for people out there who like, you know, rolling dice and just kind of that kind of uh, exciting kind of gameplay. Lighthearted. Yeah. Uh, there are some expansions to this. I believe there's a campaign to it that I think we have that we haven't played we have yet. Not played it yet. But no. this is definitely our joint favorite game by John DeClaire, I yes. believe. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. So that is my number 24 of all time. That is Space Base. All right, last three. So my number 23 is another crossover from something that Naveen has chosen in the past. This is a game that was designed by Shem Phillips and SJ McDonald, uh, published by Garpill Games and Renegade Game Studios in 2019. You probably already know mm. the game because it is Paladins of the West Kingdom. Very so apparently yes. I like this one a little bit more than you do. Apparently, yeah. I'm so shocked, by the way, but from his about his top 50. Why? Because he expresses his joy about games a lot more than I do. And so every time we play a game, he's always like, God, this is such a good game. And I always think, oh, that's got to be in his top 10. Only but one game can only be 10 one games number. Yeah. Can be in his top 10. Yeah. So it was really shocking yeah. to know where, where they all align. Okay. But uh, yes, this is a game that is really, really fun to play for two players, but you can play up to four. Um, mm -hmm. It's 
probably the heaviest in the West Kingdom trilogy. We covered all three of those games, so if you are interested in watching those, we do have a playlist. But essentially, if you've never played this game before, each player has their own player board, and you're basically trying to maximize the buildings that mm -hmm. you build on them in order to score points. You yep. can score points in a lot of different ways. It's kind of difficult to explain, mm -hmm. but it's called Paladins because you also have a deck of Paladins that you're going to be choosing from round yes. to round that'll give you a certain bonus that will affect that round gameplay. Yeah, a little boost as to what you're able to do during yes. that round, yeah. Yeah, the uh, the meeple currency is, is really interesting because yes. they allow you to do certain things on your board. That's why they're kind of color-coded, mm -hmm. but uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. The very, <laughs> yeah. very short, quick very and short dirty end, gist. Yeah. It's really thinky and I love it. <laughs> that is my number 23, Paladins of the West Kingdom. Okay, moving on. My number 23 of all time is a game that came out in 2013 and it's kind of notoriously out of print, but I think there is going to be a reprint coming soon that's kind of like a big box version of this. Mm. And it's designed by two different designers, Helmut Oli as well as Lian Lanhard Urgler. I do apologize if I've mispronounced your names. Definitely. Uh, yeah, the publisher <laughs> is Z-Man Games and it is Russian Railroads. Yeah. Ah, yes, this one. So Another this, brown box. Another brown box, but this... this <laughs> Pretty intriguing things going on in here. Yeah. Uh, you essentially are running different rail tracks. Uh, you have three different railroads that you are trying to level up and kind of, it's, it's essentially a track game where you're trying yeah. to push tracks. It's not a train game. It's not a train as game. As much as it seems like no, it would be. I have tricked a friend into playing it because I told him <laughs> it was a train game. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so true. essentially what you're going to be doing here is if there's a worker placement aspect of the game where you're trying to move your locomotives ahead on different tracks, uh, and you're trying to score a bunch of different points. You're trying to hire different engineers so you can do something a little bit cooler. You're trying to build out your factories and essentially move down a track. So it's just a huge tracks game. <laughs> uh, I guess it's thematic, trains, trains, tracks. Yeah. You know, you're going up tracks. Right. Um, the thing that is uh, very interesting in this game is scores in the upper 200s is very common. So it is a true point salad type of game mm. where you can do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I, I really, really like it. Yeah, this is a, this is definitely a game that's notorious, notoriously out of print. Mm -hmm. It has, a, there's an expansion for it. There's like German rails and American rails. I think those are also out of print. I don't know. Or maybe they're more in print. I, I can't keep up I anymore. know one of them <laughs> used to be available for sale on the BGG store. I don't oh, know if that's okay. still a thing, uh, but definitely about two years ago it was when I when I first got this game. I got this game actually at, at Essen because it was not out of print over there. They yeah. had a huge stack of it, and I was like, ooh, I want to get this. So, so are all of our rule, the rule book is not in English. I think the rule book is in German. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the back here is all in German right here when I look at it. But it's, it is language uh, independent. Yes. So. Yes. It doesn't matter what copy you have. Yes, and I, like I said, I think that there's going to be a new big box coming out. I'm not exactly sure when, but I remember seeing some uh, some postings about that. It's a fun game. Yeah, so that is my number 23 of all time. That is Russian Railroads. All right, so my second to last game on this list, my number 22, is a game that I know for sure is going to be higher on your list even before looking at it. Uh, it's a game that was designed by Vital Lacerda. Uh, published, this version was published by Stronghold Games in 2018 because this is a, a, a redesign or a deluxified version. Uh, it's a sequel. Second one, yeah. yeah. It's the second one. Yeah. It's called CO2 <laughs> Second Chance. Yes. So hence the second chance part. Uh -huh. This is a second version of the game. The original game was called CO2, and I don't actually remember who published that one. But they're both designed by Vitala Serta, mm -hmm. and they definitely have differences because I've ran this game before at a convention, at a local convention. I, I, uh, I ran it and taught it. And uh, a couple of people brought the original version. That's right. And they we were brought trying, CO2. Yeah. I was trying to figure out how they can play the original version, but it was so different. Yeah. So don't get bamboozled by the differences. That's They're right. different games. They are different games, yeah. Yeah. So if you've never played this game before, we have covered the uh, fully cooperative version of it because there are two modes of play. There's a fully co-op mode as well as a, uh, a semi-competitive mode. And so uh, the theme of this game, the reason why it's called CO2 is because it's about ridding the world of pollution that these these factories and these industries have created because the world is going to end <laughs> if we don't do that. Yeah, and so it's 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 a really hard game. I think uh, Vital Lacerda has designed it so that a majority of the time players will lose. I think it's like something like one in four times you'll win or one in three times you'll win. Something so like that. It, it becomes it's difficult. Yeah. Super hard. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, we, we really prefer the cooperative mode of play because yes. you can work together uh, to, to try to win this game. Yes. It's a really, really fun game to play cooperatively because it's it, you don't have full knowledge of no. each other's mm -hmm. stuff, but you're also still working together. And it's still very much so a battle 
tell us or to design. And so if you're, if you're familiar with his other games, it's very thinky. It's really, really uh, hard to, to strategize through. Yeah, right? there's, there's a, a luck element where uh, the way pollution comes out. So right. sometimes you can find yourself in, in a bad, in like bad shape because yeah. uh, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. Right. But you can think on your feet. And uh, what's nice about the co-op is, yes, it's co-op, but there is... Um, there is some secret objectives that you both have to achieve that mm -hmm. you cannot outright tell each That's other, which becomes very, very, in, in, very, very interesting for me in this game. Um, the semi-cooperative or semi-competitive, I'm yeah. not sure exactly which way to phrase that, but basically yeah. it is the competitive mode of play, but it's semi-competitive because everybody can lose. Like there's, mm -hmm. there's a chance that everybody just loses the game. Right. So yeah, that if you're one, out for yourself only, mm -hmm. then sometimes, and you don't do something for the greater good, then the entire game can be lost. That version of the game is good. Uh, it's just really, really difficult mm -hmm. and a little bit frustrating. And for that reason, we prefer the fully cooperative mode, but it is a fantastic game. And I think that this version of it specifically is the better version. Mm -hmm. And it's also my number 22 game of all time. That is CO2 Second Chance. Okay, my number 22 game of all time is an Uwe Rosenberg-like game, but not designed by Uwe Rosenberg. This one came out back in 2018, That's and true. it's published by Claudia and Ralph Portenheimer, and it is published by Z-Man Games, and it is Lowlands. Oh, yeah. This is a... who? this is a good game. So essentially what's happening in, in here is there is a tidal wave or water that's going to be coming in uh, kind of over... I guess spilling over into our farmlands. <laughs> uh -huh. So what we're trying to do is there's a delicate balance between growing your farm and keeping it productive versus contributing money to a dike to try to prevent the water from kind of coming in and taking out everything that we've built up. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There is kind of this like uh, pressure that you feel to contribute goods and resources to the dam so that you can kind of hold that water back. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to be the one that's only contributing and other people are building up their farm. Right. So there's kind of this teeter-totter balance between between, okay, how much do I want to contribute to preventing this water from coming in and flooding versus how much do I want to spend time on building up my farm? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a fantastic game. It's yeah. really, really interesting. It's really fun. Uh, it's definitely the most Uwe Rosenberg-esque game that we play that's not designed by Uwe Rosenberg. Mm -hmm. And it actually says that somewhere. I think it has like a seal of approval or something on from it. From Uwe Rosenberg. Yeah. Um, and the reason why is because you have a board, you have a player board, and it's basically like your farmland, and you're going to be building out fences, you're going to be reading sheep, animals, yeah. building out these tiles that will give you end of game scoring parameters or just let you kind of do something mm -hmm. different. Uh, they, break, they break the rules in different right. ways. And that aspect of it feels very Uwe, Uwe Rosenberg. The uh, worker placement or action selection mechanism, I guess, is, is really interesting in that you have the three workers and they're valued differently. And depending on which worker you place on the different actions that are on the left side of your board, mm -hmm. it'll dictate how strong of an action that is, yeah. how many resource cards you get to draw, how many fences you get to build, et cetera. And so that, that part of it is super interesting, coupled with the fact that you're also kind of working together with everybody around the table to try to build that dam, or don't. Or don't. You don't have to yeah, build it. You, to. There's no nothing saying that you have to prevent this uh, this the wave from, from coming. coming. You just don't want to be like... You, want, you last... don't want to be the person who contributed the least amount when, when the water breaks. yeah, yeah. overflows. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. So, so. It, it becomes very, very interesting in that because you're trying to kind of delicately balance between mm -hmm. building out as well as protecting. So that is my number 22 of all time. That is Lowlands. All right, we are here at our number 21. This is our last game uh, each of the video. And this is a card game for me. Uh, it's a game that was designed by Thomas Singh, published by Cosmos in 2019, a super popular game. And it is called The Crew, The Quest for Planet Nine. Yes. So this is a fantastic game. People all around the world were raving about this when it first came mm -hmm. out, even before we got to play it. It was yeah. so popular already. And this is probably my favorite trick-taking game of all time. Wow, yeah, it true, is, yeah. yeah, I think so. It, is, list, it yeah. is a fully cooperative game where you're essentially trying to go in on a quest to find this this Planet Nine, mm -hmm. and there's a log book, and there are, I believe, 50 missions. 50 missions, yeah. And technically, you're supposed to start at number one and try to make your way all the way to mission number 50 without losing and that's how you win the game yeah it's really hard if you've have you done it have you have you really done that that seems One impossible to 50 just uh, i like think so. it's a long game night yeah yeah but if you've done it 
let us know because that seems impossible. <laughs> and it's just a fantastic trick-taking game because of that fully cooperative aspect. You know, each mission will tell you how to set up the, the mission. You're going to lay out this uh, deck of smaller cards that mirror the deck, the deck of larger yeah. cards that you'll be passing out. And uh, the way that it works is depending on the mission, it'll tell you which cards need to be won in what order. In a sequence, and so yeah. if I take like the pink three, and it says that I have to win that trick first. That means out of all of the cards that were divvied out, I need to win a trick that has that pink three in it. Yes. In order for us to satisfy that yeah. requirement. Right? A lot of the stress in this game comes from just that that initial draft as to who is going to have to win which ones. Because yeah. sometimes you have a deck of or a hand of cards. It's like okay, I can I can definitely win that that yellow one, mm -hmm. but somebody else thinks that they also have a deck of cards that's good enough to win right. that yellow one. But if I snag if I snag that, yeah. Now they are forced to pick something that's like less than ideal. So it's like yeah. how the heck are we going to do this? They might be left yeah. with like the yellow or the blue one. Mm -hmm. And maybe they have the blue one in their yeah, hand. Yeah. How do they win a trick with the blue one if they have the blue one, right? right? right. So it's, it's really interesting. You can't communicate, really. No. There's only like one way of communicating per mission, mm -hmm. per person. And mm -hmm. it, it's really interesting. It's a fantastic yeah. game. If you enjoy trick-taking and you don't mind cooperative games and you have not played this game before, do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Plays good at all player counts, too. Uh, I think the two player is great, mm -hmm. uh, all the way up to five players. Yeah. So that is my number 21, The Crew, The Quest for Planet Nine. Okay, last game on this list. This is my number 21 of all time. Came out in early 2020, so it feels like it's been out for a little bit longer than mm -hmm. it has. Uh, designed by Vital Lacerda and published by Eagle Griffin Games. And this is On Mars. Yes. Wow. Yes. Look so at that. this one is another one of those big box behemoths and uh, essentially what you're doing in this game is you are trying to inhabit Mars by building up uh, the ability to survive on Mars. You're trying to build out water plants, mm -hmm. um, trying to oxygenate the air. You're trying to do a bunch of different things so that you're colonizing you're, Mars. You're trying to colonize it to make yeah. it sustainable for life. Uh, what's really cool about this is there are two different aspects of the game. There is the space station where you can take certain types of actions, and then you can eventually go down onto Mars and, and set forth your plan right. to try to help build it up. Yeah, literally two halves of the board. Literally two halves of the board. Where you're going to be traveling back and yeah. forth between. So at the beginning of the game, you're going to be spending a lot of time in the space station because there's not too much going on on Mars. But as the game progresses and goes on, uh, your trips back and forth become uh, less optimal sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so you really want to do as much as you can when you're down on Mars or when you're up in the space station. Uh, the duality of this game of, of when do you go up and when do you come down is is very, very fascinating. Yeah, and the uh, resource the yes. cycle. There's the, a life, the cycle life cycle of the resources. Of the resources. Yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, you need like humans to work in the mines, the mines to produce the batteries to uh, something, something, something. <laughs> I can't remember exactly the, what something, the next something one. Something, something, cycle. Cycle, yeah. So then the water to get the plants, the plants for the oxygen, the oxygen so yeah. that you can yeah. have more humans breathing the oxygen. So uh, this game is fantastic. I, I, I know it's going to be higher on your list because you haven't spoken about it. Uh, yeah, you know, Mars, I got to admit, yeah. I thought that this was going to be higher on your list. And I, I feel like I'm going to say that with every Vital Asserta that's not in your top 10. You just want like but, one, two, three, four, five. But I, I get it. This one is his <laughs> heaviest game, in my opinion. I would say so, yeah. So there's definitely quite the barrier. And I'm not saying that that's why this is your 21. But, 21 is um, a great number. It is a good number. But that is that is going to be a barrier for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, myself included, the first time I played this, I almost didn't like it because it was so heavy, just yeah. so crunchy. And you played it upside down. And I played it upside down. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but uh, but it is a fantastic game. If if you are intrigued by by the topic of Mars or space colonizing or it, yeah. colonizing, and you really want to dig into a heavy, thinky, crunchy game, this is it. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this one. Uh, we did cover it on the channel, so if you are interested in seeing mm -hmm. how it plays, uh, there are links anywhere that you can find them. We've covered it twice. Yeah. We've we covered have, yes. the the original one, and this one, and we've also covered the uh, expansion, which is the cooperative. We did the cooperative surviving expansion. Surviving yeah. Mars, I believe. Or, yeah, that was on I'm, Kickstarter. That one's done, uh, mm -hmm. and I think they're just now manufacturing it. And so that is my number 21 of all time. That is on Mars. And this is also the topic of today's giveaway, or yeah. the giveaway for this video. Mm -hmm. So typically, you you know, as uh, we've been doing, we tried to do, we tried to pair the giveaway with one of our number one spots of the, the video. Yep. And so this is going to be a Vitala Serta themed giveaway. It's not for On Mars. Um, we are partnering with Eagle Griffin to give away two games. One is for a deluxe copy of Lisboa. Mm -hmm. 
And so we haven't spoken about Lisboa yet. Not yet. Uh, no. It's probably going to be somewhere on the list, maybe. <laughs> probably. But it is the game that we're giving away today. And the second giveaway is for a pledge for Weather Machine, mm -hmm. which was the newest uh, game uh, that was d designed by Vitalis Soto that was on Kickstarter. So we actually did a video for that as well yep. uh, fairly recently. And so because we're giving away two different games, this is going to be two different links. You have to enter for both if you would like to, to have a chance to at winning win either. Yeah. Um, there are, I believe, some shipping restrictions, which we're going to list. All the details are going to be in the description below, including when the giveaway ends, as well as all of the shipping restrictions. Again, we do apologize. It's all going to be dependent on the restrictions of the publisher. Mm -hmm. But uh, please feel free to, to enter the giveaway. We're really excited about it. And also make sure that you are checking your spam folders once these giveaways end, because again, we haven't been receiving responses from those who have been winning. So that's it. Yep. Well, there you have it. That is our video for our top 21 to 30. Um, thank you everybody who's been contributing your list as well and kind of following along. We are having a really fun time reading through your list. And as usual, uh, please feel free to leave a comment down below telling us what your number 21 to 30 are as well. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do want to follow along on the other videos that are going to be coming out, feel free to subscribe. And thank you again for watching the video. Take care. Bye. Bye.